Thank you, Maestro. All right. <coughs> all right, we do always rise and give unto the Most High, y'all. His Son, Yeshua, the true Messiah, always to all of y'all divine preachers in every place. Preaching, teaching, living y'all's divine word. I was the beloved minister that laid in this part of Vinyard, whom I'm not ashamed to call brethren, could dish greeting to them their respective places. Always to those that are watching them by way of live internet. To the dispersed, to the scattered, to the Jews first, and also to the Gentile, could dish greeting to them their respective places. As we have to say last, never least, to the way of Yah Synagogue. Probably on you all in your perspective places. Once again, from TV, internet, radio, wherever our voice can be heard, wherever we can be seen. Before we came on, had nothing come on. When we got off, absolutely nothing ain't else. nothing else coming on. If they're not teaching Kodesh, living a clean, sanctified life. The people ain't in nothing, and they hadn't heard nothing. <clears throat> this is an attempt <clears throat> to collect the debt. Whatever you hypocrite, false pretend, backbite, mumble and grumble against will be used in that collection of a debt. These messages are always being recorded for quality assurance and make sure no side deals get cut with nobody. But everybody got to come in, brother. Red, straight, narrow, path. All right, that's St. John 3 and 16. <clears throat> Let me just talk with y'all a little bit so I can get out of the way. Man, it been rough. But thank the Lord. Amen. This is St. John 6, <clears throat> I'm sorry, 3 and 16. Listen to the book. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten sons that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Now, I have to consider this. What, now, what do we consider? Mm. For us, looking at Yeshua as the Savior, we have to consider this. According to what was said and stated here, that it was seen. I think we would be safe to even speculate that God had a a provision or God had God made provisions by giving us the son, then God's purpose was to destroy it. Because God said he so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Well or we can look at it from the from the parameter of perimeter or the parameter of that God and the world being separate. So God had to put something here to make a connection <clears throat> in order for God to kind of consider to give of himself to it. Kind of sound a little kind of off at the time. But let's continue to look at it. Listen. For God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world. So we take this at the first. When we found and we picked up Yeshua, he told us that he didn't come as a judge, didn't he? He didn't come to judge the world. He let it, he let it be known that he did not come to judge the world. Did he? He came to save him. Listen. But that the world through him might be saved. But that the world through him might be saved. So when we take this and we look at the world being saved, his name being Yeshua. When the angel came and told his mother Mary, that thou shalt, well, told Joseph that thou shalt call his name. What was it? For he shall save who people? But then it says here the world. From their, from their sin, which is going to be their destruction. So the purpose of God putting the son in him because God had already determined to destroy this place but yet God had to set and had made provision that if I give them the son if they receive the son then I'll save those whom, who, who it is that received the son listen he that believeth on him is what not condemned so we talked about condemned would be what declared to be wrong anytime you find a condemned sign that means something's wrong something seriously wrong you can't find condemned and take off fix Condemned has to be torn down. And he that believeth on him is not condemned. Listen. But he that believeth not is condemned already. He that believeth not is condemned already. Listen. Because he have not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. So he has to believe in the name of the only begotten Son of God. Listen. And this is the condemnation. And this is where you come in and be declared to be wrong here. Listen. That light is come into the world. And what happened? And men love darkness rather than light. Because of what? Their deeds were evil. Listen. For every one that doeth evil. What do they do? Hateth the light. 
Everyone that doeth evil hateth the light. Listen. Neither cometh to the light. Why? Lest his deeds should be reproved. If you come to the light, your deeds going to be shown. What, what happens, son? But he that doeth truth. Do what? Cometh to the light. Yes. That his deeds may be made manifest. That what happened? That they are wrought in God. Wrought is the past tense of worked in God. That's going to let you allow you to come to the light. Pick me up at First Epistle John chapter 1. <clears throat> First Epistle John chapter 1. Listen. That which was from the beginning. That which was from the beginning. Which we have heard. Which we've heard. Which we have seen with our eyes. Which we've seen with our eyes. Which we have looked upon. Which we've looked upon. And our hands have handled. I love this. Y'all don't believe Man, I love this thing. This is some deep conversation. That which was from the beginning. Which we what? Have heard. Which we've heard. Which we have seen with which our we, eyes. Which we've seen with our eyes. Which we have looked upon. Which we've looked upon. And our hands have handled. And our hands have handled. Of the word of life. What happened, son? For the life was manifested. Yes. And we have seen it and bear witness. Come on. And she went to you that eternal life. Come which on. Was, which was with the father. Listen. And was manifested unto us. Listen. That which we have seen and heard declare we unto you. Are we doing <laughs> telling you what we've heard? Listen. That he also may have fellowship with us. That you also may have fellowship with us. Listen. And truly our fellowship is with the Father. And truly our fellowship is with the Father. And with his Son. And with his Son. Jesus Christ. With, listen. And these things write we unto you, that your joy may be, for, may be full. Listen. This then is the message. That what? Which we have heard of him. What happens, son? And declare unto you. Tell me what you tell him. That God is light. God is white. Light. What happened, son? And in him is no darkness at all. What else? If we say that we have fellowship with him. And do what? And walk in darkness. What happened? We lie. And do what? Not the truth. Pick me up at the book of Genesis, chapter 1. Other brother, hold me at St. John 3 and 16. This is Genesis 3 and 1. <clears throat> Listen. Now the serpent was more subtle than Genesis any. one. I'm sorry, one and one. Listen. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. That which was from the beginning, which we've heard, which we've seen with our own eyes, which we handle, the word of life. He said, "We declare it unto you." In the beginning. God created the heaven and what was the sun? And the earth. And what happened? And the earth was without form. And what else? And void. And darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. Which would be light for us. And what happened, son? And God said, let there be light. And what was there? And there was light. It had to happen. That was a command. Anytime God speaks, anytime God speaks, something has to happen. Something has to happen. God said Come on, son. And God saw the light, that it was good, and God divided the light from the darkness. Come on. And God called the light day. And what else did he do? The darkness he called night. Yeah. And the evening and the morning were the first day. Yeah. And God said, let there be a firmament in the midst of the waters, and let it divide the waters from the waters. What did he just declare, brethren? What did he just declare, brethren? I can't hear you, brethren. It's just called dry land. He just made dry land. He separated the water. All the waters were one and the same. Let me tell you something. All the water still wasn't the same now. It all going right to the same place. Even Solomon tried to declare this stuff with the water. How rivers pour into, he said, but yeah, you notice it never fill. It's all the same water. It all recycles itself and come right back around. You go get a creek, a creek going to turn, it's going to run into a stream, a stream going to run into a river, a river going to run into a, a bigger body of water lake, and it's going to pour right into the ocean. It come the same way. God came and he divided it. When he called the firmaments, he called, the, he called dry land to come up from it and divide it. Come on, son. And God made the firmament and divided the waters which were under the firmament from the waters which were above the firmament, and it was so. Come on. 
and God called the firmament heaven. Mm -hmm. And the evening and the morning were the second day. Come on. And God said, let the waters under the heaven be gathered together unto one place. Come on. And let the dry land appear, and it was so. Come on. And God called the dry land earth, and the gathering together of the waters called he seas, and God saw that it was good. Yeah. And God said, let the earth bring forth grass, the herb yielding seed, and the fruit tree yielding fruit after his kind, whose seed is in itself upon the earth, and it was so. Come on. And the earth brought forth grass, and herb yielding seed after his kind, and the tree yielding fruit, whose seed was in itself after his kind. Yeah. And God saw that it was good. Come on. And the evening and the morning were the third day. Come on, son. And God said, let there be lights in the firmament of the heaven to divide the day from the night, and let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and years. Yeah. And let them be for lights in the firmament of the heaven to give light upon the earth. And it was so. Come on. And God made two great lights, the greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night. He made the stars also. He made the stars also. And you know what? Something that John told us in the first epistle of John, he told you that truly our fellowship is with the father. When he told you that God was light, what would that make them if they were with him? How to make them the stars. That would have to put them in the heaven. That's what God did. See, even in his speech, you got to know scripture for it to make sense. To say, truly, our fellowship is with the Father. Then he went and told you that which is from the beginning. Amen. Which we've heard. We heard what the man declared. He's saying, what this man said, we declare it unto you. He's saying, truly, our fellowship is with the Father. Then he told you that the man was light. And in him is no darkness at all. Because you got to remember, his seed is in itself. No good tree, he told you, could do what? Where would, where would Yeshua get that from when he spake that in the seventh chapter of the book of Matthew? He got it because from the book. Well, how many times? We, we've heard that before you learned that, though, right? See how we talk. When I heard that, that means a good tree can't bring forth bad fruit. And you might say, well, why not? Because um, it, it, can't, it ain't supposed to. Do. I mean, for us, we know you can go scientifically and speak on it, but we had to believe it because of Scripture. Because when God created, when he told everything to yield out from itself, he said it seeds in itself. You have the ability to yield it out of yourself. To bring forth the same thing. When he came along in the book of Isaiah, he said, oh, Ah, uh, what does he say? He called them something. Sinful nation, a seed of evil doers, which means they came out. Where does the seed come from? Them fellas said the seed come out from itself. You ever seen seeds sprouting out seeds? Seeds coming out from something. So the mere fact that he calls us seed of evil do it, it was really referring back to our fathers. See, we learn this, and the only way we understand that statement, as simple that might sound, he called us a seed of evil do our forefathers, which meant they came out from somewhere. And where they came out produced those children. Y'all got me? So now we start to sit down and look at John telling us that which in front of again, that which I which we've heard, that which our eyes have seen, our hands have handled. Um, all these different things right here of the word of God, all these different things. Then he come along and let you know we declare it unto you. And truly our fellowship is with the father. Then he told you that God is light. So if God is light and our fellowship is with God, then that will put us right here at where creation was. God put a light in the firmaments. There were other lights and he allowed them to rule along with the other lights. Then he had your darkness. All these different things we ought to consider. Illumination. Listen. And God set them in the firmament of the heaven to give light upon the earth. So you think about this. If God is light and our God, according to 115 division of Psalm, verse 3, is where? In the where? In the heavens. What's going to be in the heavens with God? Then Yeshua came along in the fifth chapter of the book of Matthew and told us, what were we? The light of the. And the light was supposed to shine where? Upon the earth. So to tell us we were the light of the world, that meant we were here to illuminate the earth. That was the purpose of making the other lights, put them in the heaven. So when you look at the premise of why God saw fit to put them down, once he created the great light and he gave it the rule of the day and he let the night let him know you rule the night. But he put a separation in them. He caused a firmament to come up and say, something needs to separate you guys. Something needs to come along and divide you guys off. There has to be a separation. 
And the mere fact when he calls this firmament to come up to heavens and we find the heavens being established, he put the lights in the heaven. And we find our God is in the heaven and our God is light. Well, here he alone and he looked at it only makes sense that anything else I'm going to make and put in the heaven is going to have to be what? It's got to be light. You see why there's a need to have the spirit? What do people say when they like Mary and Mary say, where they say they want to go? How are you going to do that if you're darkness? The only way it makes sense when people sit around and say about going to heaven, and being with God, it doesn't really make sense if you go back and look at the scripture. Because if you go back to John declare now that which was from the beginning, that which our eyes, that which we've heard, that which we've seen with our eyes and we've handled this. We already see what the premise is. Why is there a need to have the spirit? We all who don't want to go to heaven. But it's virtually impossible because there's a great gulf between us. When he set the heavens up, he put a great gulf between them. There's a, there's a great, if you think they fall, try to travel and get them. It's a great gulf between us and them. And the reason why, because he looked at where I set, it has to be illuminated. That's why the Bible said, in him is what? How could I come out and I be the devil and I came from God? According to Genesis. Would that make sense? I came out, I'm, I'm of God, I just got the devil in me. The book said no darkness at all. That's why I talk about he that abided in him, sin of not. You remember John started talking? It really don't make sense unless you know Genesis. Whosoever abided in him, that again put us back, his seed is in itself. It, will make, it actually don't make sense. It would make no sense to see a plum tree that came out from an orange tree. Plum rolling around the ground. Where you come from? From that orange tree over there. All I see is oranges on that tree. And you trying to tell me that you came from that orange tree. Yeah, that's where I came from. I know I'm a plum, but I, I, I really am. I'm, I'm, I'm saved. I come, everything saved is orange. Come from the orange tree. Plum rolling on the ground. Saved. Does that make sense? As much sense they're going to make, we're going to be saved if we don't come back to the, real, to the realization of how this thing has been established. Where are we trying to go? It only makes sense. God going to put the light in the heaven, which means we have to become light. So God so loved the world that he did something. Gave his only begotten son. Pick up son. Let's, go. let's pick up again down here in Genesis chapter 1, verse 26. Other brother, pick me up at the third chapter, book of Luke. I old mother thing these folks, they get, it's a mystery. It's a hidden truth to these people how God operates. I can't get that testimony. I'd be like you should say. I'd be a liar like under them. They say they know God. If I say I don't know him, I'd be a liar just like them. Third chapter of the book of Genesis. Say me about verse 33 for me. This is Genesis chapter. I mean, Luke, give me the book of Doc. I'm sorry, three. Give me Doc 3 and 33. For those watching that, Luke, Luke was a physician. We call him Doc. Isn't that right? He a physician. And they that are whole, what they need? I mean, they that are sick. Well, y'all scared me for a minute. See, it got me off for a minute. They that are sick, what they need? We tell these folk, call the doctor. Ain't that right? So he got me Luke 3 and about 33. This is Genesis chapter 1 and verse 26. Listen. And God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over the cattle and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. And what happened? So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. Hold what you got. Let's jump over and pick me up at the third chapter of the book of Luke at verse 33. You hold me that Genesis chapter 1. Some kind of way we got to put all this together. Listen to the book which was the son of Amenadab, which was the son of Aram, which was the son of Ezram, which was the son of Phares, which was the son of Judah, which was the son of Jacob, which was the son of Isaac, which was the son of Abraham, which was the son of Darah, which was the son of Nicoa, which was the son of Saruk, which was the son of Ragu, Ragu, which was the son of Phelek, which was the son of Heber, which was the son of Salah, which was the son of Canaan, which was the son of Arphaxit, Arphaxit, which was the son of Sim, which was the son of Noah, which was the son of Lamech, 
which was the son of Methuselah, which was the son of Enoch, which was the son of Jared, which was the son of Mel- Meliel, which was the son of Canaan, which was the son of Enos, which was the son of Seth, which was the son of Adam. Which was the son of who? Adam. Which was the son of who? Adam. And where are they going to put us at, son? Which was the son of God. So God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. I had to consider that. When God made and declared it to be good, God was showing his love for it. He loved it so much that he gave his only begotten son. And we had to trace it back to look at this. You can't think it just happened when you should have jumped on the scene, do you? When did y'all think you started loving it? It was important we had to go here and know this. These people don't know they're doing that. St. John 3.13 is something you, we did, in Bible study, we used to pour, I mean, in vacation Bible school, we used to pour the mold and we used to color it. And then you hang it on your wall, take it and show your parents. St. John 3.16. These dumb people don't even know what they're doing. It had to happen before he got him. Remember the law having, what was it again? But not the, what was it? So God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. It was important that we knew that. All of a sudden, it just made sense that you start putting in the third chapter of the book of Luke his genealogy and trace it back to Adam and then tell you that Adam was the son of God. That's the only man that could trace back to say, you can't put me with anybody else. You couldn't put him with anybody else. He would have had a test man as similar to with Melchizedek. The only reason we understand Melchizedek, you got to understand Adam. Because Adam was without, what was it again? Father and what? That's all we can got. We can't say beginning of the days. And we can't put end of the day. But we learned that from Adam. Hmm? Are we all good? Amen. That's how we learn it. So God so loved the word, he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should do what now? Should not do what? But have what? Everlasting life. At Genesis chapter 2. 2 and 19. This is a little something to talk. We ain't even preaching. We're just talking. Let's talk amongst ourselves a little bit. This is Genesis chapter 2, and give me about verse 17. Listen. But of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Make it 16. Listen. And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, of every tree of the garden thou mayest. This is going to be important for y'all later, for whatever reason. Of every, what was it again? Tree of the garden thou mayest freely eat. And what, and, uh, and God did what now? And the Lord God commanded the man. God commanded the man. What would that be for? That was an order. God commanded the man. What did he do? Saying. Do what? Of every tree of the garden thou mayest freely eat. Yeah. But of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. What happened, son? Thou shalt not eat of it. Now, you, why? For in the day that thou eatest thereof. What happened, son? Thou shalt surely die. So what God did because of his love for the world. I need to give these people some. My only begotten son. And what I'm going to do there. Whosoever believeth in him. They shouldn't perish. They ought to have everlasting life. So God commanded the man, say, every tree of the other garden, thou mayest freely, what was it again? Eat. But what? Of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. What happened? Thou shalt not eat of it. So why? For in the day that thou eatest thereof. Well, why not? Thou shalt surely die. That was a need for God to put a preacher on scene. At the third chapter of the book of Genesis. Three and one. Listen to the book. Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. What happened? Read that again. Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. The what was it again? I'm getting old. Now the serpent. Now the who? Serpent. Was what? More subtle than any beast of the field. Which the Lord God had made. You hold what you got. Revelation chapter 12. Give me verse 9 right quick. Something come to mind. Y'all all right tonight? Amen. As we talk a little bit. Revelation chapter 12 and verse 9. Let's see what was going on at that time. Listen. And the great dragon was cast out. That old serpent called the, from the devil. Whoa, 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 whoa. That, what happened now? 
and the great dragon was cast out. Jack me up about verse, back me up about verse seven. Listen. And there was war in heaven. And there was war where? In heaven. Tell me what happened, son. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon. Who is Michael, brother? Was an archangel. Angel of authority. You ought to know that. When the Bible tells you in the book of Jude, Michael, the archangel, he told you that for a reason. They are, hope the arrow angels. We don't know what these niggas told me to follow la la la. He was an archangel. He was one of authority. That's why I told you Michael and his angels. They followed Michael. Michael is a warring angel. Gabriel is not a fighter. Gabriel is an archangel. He's a messenger angel. When a message were to be brought down, you're going to hear it from Gabriel. When you see Michael, or you do this right here and try to go as far as you can with your head, Michael coming to fight. So there was war in heaven. And Michael, and what happened now? And his angels did what? fought against the dragon. Listen. And the dragon fought and his angels. Listen. And prevailed not. And you see what happened? They couldn't win. And you want to fight Big Boy. You couldn't even beat Michael. And you want to fight Big Daddy. They ain't, like I said, this ain't what you want. I assure you, this ain't what you want. Listen. Neither was their place found anymore in heaven. Listen. And the great dragon was cast out. That old serpent. That what? Old serpent. And you can see now, that old serpent. What was he called, son? The devil. He was called the devil. Listen. And Satan. And he was called Satan. Never did find what he called him, Lucifer, huh? And then, matter of fact, when you go and you read Genesis chapter 3, we were just reading, it told you that the serpent was more subtle than any other creature which the Lord God had made. So when y'all think this fight happened, according to the uh, Jeshlova witnesses, just longer witness, because ain't nothing but a couple of penises. These ignorant people think this happened in 1940 something. When the Hitler, Lord. This, y'all read it. They believe when Hitler got cat, when Hitler was taken down, this is when it happened. There was a great war, World War I. Think about it. That was one of the most notable wars they had. So they account this doing about World War I around here. They said this is when all this stuff happened. So what was going on at that time before, he, before 1940 something? How did people get so stupid? <laughs> Listen. Which, de- which deceiveth the whole world. Which deceiveth the whole world. Listen. He was cast out. He, he into, was cast out. Into the earth. Into the earth. And his angels, angels were cast out with him. So what happened? And I heard a loud voice saying in heaven. What did they say? Now has come salvation and strength. So guess what they were telling them? Here come the sun. Here come the sun. Listen. And the kingdom of our God. Listen. And the power of his Christ. Listen. For the accuser of our brethren is cast down. Listen. Which accused them before our God day and night. Listen. And they overcame him by the blood of the lamb. And what happened? And by the word of their testimony. And what else did they do, son? And they loved not their lives unto death. Yeah. Unto the death. Uh-huh. Therefore rejoice, ye heavens. Come on. And ye that dwell in them. Come on. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth. Woe to the what? Inhabitants of the earth. Why? And of the sea. Listen. For the devil is come down unto you. And, the, and what happened? Having great wrath. Why? Because he knoweth that he had but a short time. So now we pick up St. John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That's how you got him. God already had provision. After he looked at this fellow, he wasn't nothing but a 100% nigger. Well, he was a 102% nigger with a 2% margin of error. And he was a 104% nigga, he was just a straight hunter. And he knew this man coming down, and the angels didn't already declare, this man having great wrath, and he know he ain't got but a little time. You know he deceived everybody. He's a deceiver. There was a time when the sons of God came before God. Guess who was there? Say. That was Satan. He won't know, where you coming from? Oh, um... I was just walking around, chilling. I wasn't doing nothing, you know what I'm saying? You know, you know nigga just chilling. <laughs> Not nigga do nigga chilling, laying around here, you know what I'm saying? Let's do some rap. Isn't that right? Rap about selling drugs or selling drugs, one or the other. And he's just walking to and fro through the earth. That's what he was doing. 
That's what he do. He deceived every. He, he a big deceiver. He tried to deceive God, but God can see him. Light can see. That's what light do. Whatsoever may manifest is what. That's why God recognized a rod of rib. You ain't fooling nobody but yourself, son. That's why Paul tried to tell you something. In 2 Corinthians chapter 12, right? Chapter 11, right quick, son. And you're going to get me back to the book of Genesis. We'll see. St. John 3.16. When we get through, we'll see. They're just shooting, from, just shooting out of here. Do these folks really know what they're doing with St. John 3.16? Absolutely not. I don't know what that mean. Let me what St. John 3.16 mean. Jesus died. Boy, what, what hell you, boy? You don't even know about the civil rights margin. How you think you get to sell in front of that bus? St. John 316. Like, wow. Wow. Listen to the book. This is 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 12. Listen to what happens, son. But what I do, that I will do. For what reason, son? That I may cut off occasion from them. That what? Desire occasion. That wherein they glory, they may be found even as we. You know what happened? You know what's amazing about that statement he made? Because in the book of Job it said, there was a what was that? There was a what? The reason it told you there was a day, it was actually telling you there was an occasion. When the sons of God came before God. You know what's amazing? You're taught something. Three times in a year, who's supposed to come? All the males. There is a day where the sons of God come before him. There's an occasion. So Paul said, what I do, that I, you know why he looked, they were like, no doubt, Paul is just like me. Why, why is this so impossible? Why is this so serious? You ought to consider him. How many times y'all heard people say, I don't like that man. He talk about other preachers. How many y'all ever heard that before? I don't believe a preacher ought to talk about nobody. Y'all ever heard people say that concerning me? But Paul said, now, what I do, that I will do, that I might cut off occasion from those that weigh in their glory, they might be found even as we. This is what he said. For such are false apostles. You know, when, this is how you tell when a preacher false. Whenever one preacher tell you that other preachers false, he not a, that's not my Jesus. That's not my Jesus. You go and say, what about Paul? I'm glad you asked me about that devil, Paul. Say, you know you just call Paul false, right? Well, that goes for everybody but for me. You, they always shoot themselves in the foot. He's telling you for such are false. Apostles. Deceitful. Workers. Remember, the devil was the deceiver. And remember, he was more subtle than every other creature. Listen to Paul's conversation. Transforming themselves. Transforming themselves. Into the apostles of Christ. And what? Are you amazed, Paul? And no marvel. He said, when I think about it, it shouldn't be that amazing. Why, Paul? For Satan himself. Did what? Is transformed. Into what? An angel of light. So? Therefore, it is no great thing. That what happened? If his ministers also be transformed. As the ministers of righteousness. Why is this important? Because the book of Revelation just told me he got cast out. He didn't come out by himself. He brought some other deceivers with him. He said, so I shouldn't be. A, when he saw a false prophet, you know, he looked at a false prophet trying to look like him. And he said, I see straight through him. You know what this reminds me of? The occasion when all the sons of God appeared before God. And that was Satan too. You know what y'all look at? Let me show y'all something right quick. Galatians chapter 2 verse 1. I wish I had a preacher. Somebody could come sit down and teach me something. Can't just be so ignorant. I'd be too ignorant to be doing this job. This is Galatians chapter 2. Pick me up at verse 1 right quick. Listen, son. Then 14 years after, I went up again to Jerusalem with Barnabas. Listen. And took Titus with me also. How did you go, son? And I went up by revelation. He went up because God revealed for him to go to Jerusalem. God put them said, God revealed it. Why y'all think we got to go back to Jerusalem? Amen. God revealing us we got to come at it right by the book. Ain't by, it was something that went across me one day. I ain't going nowhere to call nobody and then went across nobody. I need some book. Let's just be honest. I, need, I can show you book by going back. Paul said when he went up by revelation, we had to go and appear there anyway. The place where everybody at is called new. What was that again? Jerusalem. I'm trying to tell you, this all stayed for, for, for practice. Everybody going to go back to the pier. It is my determination to do what, brother? 
Where? Jehoshaphat. Jehoshaphat was the king of where? Of Jerusalem. The king of Judah. God said, in his determination, all nations going to be gathered to Jerusalem. Why would it already... The only way I'm not predestined in mind and heart to already start turning or in tune to go back is simply because I'm not the people of God. The other people that are going to come back, it's going to be by a trap. It's going to be by a snail. God put on us to know it booked the back us to go back. That's when they go back. God told me to go with T.D. Jakes over there and Ben and hit him. Okay, go ahead. It's a snail. Amen. I reveal I'm going on fall prophet. Amen. We're going by way of book. They're like God told us. Amen. And, and you know how God told me he's going to bring her back? How he say he's going to bring her back? Swift, beast. Swift what? Beast. Swift beast? He said swift horses. Horses. What are they, how do you determine engines? Horsepower. I, who else can do that but God? You get your engine, they ask you what? You tell them when you got an engine, they say, you got a, a what kind of engine you got? What they ask you? How many? What is it again? My God already set that thing up. What you going to do with it? Man, don't tell me. That, he don't tell me going to bring me back on horse. For, God lied, God. Then I found out that the engine got horsepower. That's how you rate about horsepower. Matter of fact, I got 350 horsepower. He said, I told you I'm going to bring you back on swift horses. Who would have thought about that? What made them make a motorized engine and then declare it by horsepower? What you got? 250 How many horses you got? 185 horses? What you got? God set them up. That's why I love him. How you gonna give you know you got these dumb niggas around here looking for a cherry? Out here buying Shetland pony, putting down payments on Shetland pony. You and them horses are gonna kill out. I know if it what see they gonna do to Shetland pony trying to get Jerusalem. Thank the Lord. Who you gonna throw that splat? <laughs> Man, we were looking at high Mike. Isn't that right? But I'm just saying. I, but you know how, you know, if you don't understand no God, look, you'll be actually looking for literal horses. Listen to the book. And communicated unto them that gospel which I preach among the Gentiles. Listen. But privately to them which were of reputation. Listen. Lest by any means I should run and ha or had run in vain. Listen. But neither Titus, who was with me, being a Greek. Was what? Compelled to be circumcised. He wasn't made to be circumcised. Come on. And that because of false brethren unawares brought in, who came in privately to spy, spy out our liberty. You know what Paul did? He was just like God. He could see them fellas right off the rip. And I, yeah, I come in, man, that word, man, trying to get myself right, man. <laughs> and that, 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 that 613, that thing, that truth, man. Right. He said, man, I see them fellas false. Don't the Bible say judge them four times? Paul done picked them guys right up. God done revealed him to go up. Somebody go to my, he, you lying. Then he probably get yeah, the Lord, Rick. you lying, brother. That's my wife. I had a guy told him one time, he see me, Tony Smell, talk to you. He said, you preached the mess I seen in Wednesday night. That's my wife. I preached, baby, you remember when I preached the other night? She said, he said, you remember I preached the same? She was saying, I was like, just stop. It's getting worse and worse. He said, the same direct message you preached, God gave it to me. Didn't it, baby? <laughs> I'm like, and he still was too stupid to just cut off and act like he was talking about something else. But they're creeping unaware. He said, despite our liberty, we're being Christ. He saw these people right off the real. Do y'all not understand? When you sit and align yourself up, just like the book say, y'all worry about how you ain't going to see people, how you don't know people. Something not for you to see at times. God had these people for, it's a reason why God don't let you see people at the time. He got to let them think they're here. They're not here from God's eyes. If you sit and hear and obey God's word, God will show them out after a while. Now he's going to trip himself up. He can go get all the light, but he done went out here about all these Duracell, Energizer, Barry, and trying to pop up there. Your light ain't, he, see, your light not authentic. He picked it right up off the roof. He just figured, let me jump up in the middle of them, and then I go look like it. He said, where you coming from? Oh, I, no, nah, I was just, um, tell another lie. Two and four through the earth, that's what he said he'd do with the seven spirit. They scan the earth. You had to, you scan it. Tell just, he a liar. Why are you going to tell the truth? Why a liar are you going to tell the truth? But I say that to say when you do stuff, people get themselves in like some of y'all to get off. I can't believe somebody false and nobody pulled to be false around the truth. Where was, the, was the devil false? What was he at? Where was he at? Why y'all think Paul said he didn't pay them? Why, you think, why Paul didn't say Something told me don't come see Peter, because Peter ain't right. If he were right, how do these false people be coming around? See how the devil, like some of y'all, 
Your mind get thrown. If everybody ain't right, then it, the place ain't right. It can't be right. Because ain't no way in the world no false people can be around the truth. How the devil wind up getting in heaven? How in the world that man Peter had the key, James? And he fell on creeped in on them guys? But Paul said, I spot them fella right on. He said that. This is what he did. This is why I try. And this is the reason why y'all need to hear it, because some of y'all get thrown. This is what Paul said he did. Who came in privately to spy out Look our how liberty. they did it. They snuck in. They, they ain't made no bit. We here. Everybody need to know we here. They kept their mouth shut. They eat on the Excuse me. You know what I'm saying? They ain't make no noise. They create right to them. Fall folk know how to do it. They know you're looking for the most, the most, the lot. They like said the, the empty wagon make the most noise. Yeah. They learn how to be quiet. They learn how to be real. You know what I'm saying? You know, man, I miss it. That's how they work. Listen to what Paul told them. Which we have in Christ Jesus. Which we have in Christ Jesus. That they might bring us into bondage. Listen. To whom we gave place by subjection. Who, who I couldn't hardly focus. To whom we gave place. Who messed up the whole feed because I couldn't believe it. To whom we gave place by what, subjection. Why, what happened, son? No, not for an hour. And you know what, the man, he said subject with me. And them guys had some authority, too. Yeah. You don't think false people have authority? Yeah. Yeah. He said, we ain't paying them niggas no attention. This is what he did. Come on, tell what you did, Paul. That the truth of the gospel might continue. With you know you. what he said? That don't stop no truth. God put a lie right there that you said you ain't going to stop no truth. I heard a man tell a story one time, I don't remember completely how it go, and said a fellow running around talking about the lie and the truth and said the lie jumped in the water to take a child, take a bear. Said the truth jumped in the water to take a bear and hung it close. I said a lie grabbed and took off running. Said the truth come out and said, there go the lie, rode and running, and the truth ain't with him. Took, said, um, took off, said the truth ain't with him. You're going to show yourself every time. Truth had all, lie had all kind of holes in his clothes. <laughs> he thinks so he done run with He saw the truth take a bear and throw it on the truth clothes and took off. Said there go a lie and the truth ain't with him. All right. No, no, I don't care what clothes you put on. You still ain't the truth. Why well, yeah, come right. on with some nice little stuff, do you think about it? You like that Joe. Everybody good at them titles, ain't it? <laughs> <laughs> Listen to the book. Y'all pray for it, man. Amen. Listen. But of these who seem to be somewhat. Listen. Whatsoever they were. What happened? It make it no matter to me. Why? God accepted no man's person. So you think they fought God paying them any attention? Come on. For they who seemed to be somewhat in conference added nothing to me. Listen. But contrarywise, when they saw that the gospel of the uncircumcision was committed unto me, as the gospel of the circumcision was unto Peter. Yeah. For he that wrought effectually in Peter to the apostleship of the circumcision, the same was mighty, mighty in me toward the Gentiles. Yeah. And when James, Cephas, and John, who seemed to be pillars, perceived the grace that was given unto me, they gave to me and Barnabas the right hands of fellowship. So what you hear about them guys after that? Hmm? You see what they had a mean by throwing them out, get rid of them? Y'all hear that part? They, they had a little mean by, man, why them niggas come around him? <laughs> man, they look at that, man, we ain't got time. That first of I'm looking at the pillars. Amen. Who holding this thing up? They, they said, whatever them fella was, I wasn't studying them. They were looking at, man, I'm looking at the pillars. Who holding this thing up? Hey, look at that, man. You ain't going to never stop no fall people from coming around. You Listen, we'll keep some strict regiments that we have to do. Don't you know fall folks will come and start practicing and start doing enough to try to get themselves in? Mm -hmm. You ain't going to never be able to get all of them out. That's what they're going to practice to do. But at the end of the day, keep your eyes on the pillow. That's what they look at. Peter and they say, man, I need to talk to y'all, man. Man, y'all need to watch these niggas around here, man. Y'all going to mess y'all minister up. Folks going to be talking. You have fall people around. When you feel they had that conversation? He looked at them guys don't add nothing to me. They add absolutely nothing to me. You got to have your mindset. I used to do that years ago. You'll be focused on watching other people. I mean, you can't watch these four men. Keep your eyes on the pillow. Keep your eyes on the man holding the thing up. Y'all hear me? Amen. That's what people don't consider. And I say all that to try to get us to understand some things, just like he saw these people there. You, when you're a guy, you'll start identifying pick people up. People are running and show themselves for a while. After a while, God let the truth come out and folks will manifest themselves over time. You just let God do what it is he do. Y'all good? Back up what I had you holding, son. Back up the book of Genesis. Before you get me that Genesis, get me back to that Genesis, the third chapter, I want you to get me that Job. Let me see that the book of Job, chapter 2, right quick, verse 1. 
Wonderful Savior. Amen. This is the book of Job, chapter 2, at verse 1. Listen to the book. Again, there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord. You know, it's amazing. Here we are again now. It's got to be a feast. They said that was an occasion. Y'all been taught three times in a year. They let you know this was one of those occasions that the who came? The sons of God came to present themselves. That's how we picked the premise up now. We didn't want to know why the Bible talking about um, three times a year, every male shall appear. Because there was a day. There was a day when the men got to show up. People don't realize this. They, people think that there's some people. What well, about doing? Just do what he told you to do. In the resurrection, ain't gonna be no, ain't gonna be no women and no men. It's gonna be all male. When God raised up, you ain't gonna go there talking about what I'm gonna do about my Brazil. Nothing. What you doing about it now? Start having you all them extra safety pin to hold it up. That kind of tight. It was a low blow one. I throw that thing out there anyway, didn't it? I'm just being honest. A lot of this stuff you get up. This is the figure shape you bear now. That's temporary. All these are temporary state. You ain't gonna get up and be no female. When God resurrected, He even told in the 22nd chapter of the book of Matthew, verse 29, "Ye do what was it, brother? And what? Nor for in the what was it? What do they do? Neither marry. What are they on? What are they on? What are they similar to though? When you seen a female angel? These, these are just figures you bearing, you bearing now. He done already told you for the two shall be what was it again? But he that is joined to the Lord is what? One spirit. The angels are light. The sons of God are light. What we coming to do, sisters, y'all coming to practice. You getting in the readiness. You ain't going to be no female. Tell me what you going to do with your nail. Paw your nails. What you going to do with anything? This is a temporary state you in. Well, we had a teacher. If we had a teacher. Folks, it, it, it'd be a mad thing, folks, when I get, they're going to see their mother when they get to him. They wife. They're going to see their sister. They aunt that raised them. Where heaven you going to? At him look a store. That's right, that's right. That's right, him look a store. This stuff makes no sense. That's why, you know, when we learn this, it gives us a different ideology of how we work together and look at this is a temporary state why would I put everything I got in my wife she gonna die I'm gonna die we ain't gonna do nothing up to death and you know we gonna see each other get yeah in the judgment everybody be, I'm talking about we don't talk about one more time right quick <laughs> now you finna go to hell you can't do that in a resurrection that man told you in a resurrection I mean it's funny but just being honest that's why the Muslims ain't gonna be saved they got three hours they can have sex with their wife and they die. You ain't going to make it. I said, I ain't give it two hours. I got an hour left. You finna go to hell. Just being honest, people mind corrupt and they don't want to believe the book. We believe the book. Amen. Listen. And Satan came also among them to present himself before the Lord. Y'all see that? He came to present. And you were told that every man put to present himself. That's how we know of a surety. This was a festive time. We told you that was, a day, that was an occasion. Listen. And the Lord said unto Satan, From whence comest thou? And what did he tell him? And Satan answered the Lord and said, From going to and fro in the earth, and from walking up and down in it. That's what they try to do. Try it like he's doing what the seven spirits do. He's sitting in to scan the whole earth. See, but you know what happened? The angel told you to woe to you. The man come down having great wrath, because he know he ain't got but a little time. So now we see God so loved the world that he gave. Since he know what this man came down to do, God looked at this. This is the love of God. This is the love of God. That God gave us his only begotten son. God had to make a man begotten of him and put this man here to come and declare something. What we pick up in the book of Genesis chapter 3, verse 1. We just had to go back there so it make a little more sense for you. Isn't that right? This is Genesis the third chapter. Listen. Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. Listen. And he said unto the woman, Yea, hath God said, Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden? And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God hath said, Ye shall not eat of it. Listen. Neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. Listen. And the serpent said unto the woman, 
you shall not surely die. For God doth know that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be open. So you know what happened? The devil disobedient, he felt like made his eyes open. So he came to deceive the woman. He came to be just like he was, that deceiver. He came down to deceive the woman. Because he looked at, I'm, well, I'm going to hell. And to prove that he was black. I ain't going by myself, though. The devil is a 102% nigga with a 2% margin of error. Come on, y'all know how we do it. You lock up, what they gonna do? I ain't going by myself. Well, you know they finna go, they'll tell. Oh, nigga gonna tell now. He looked at something. He ain't going to hell by himself. Like he told you. Whoa, that means destruction to the earth because he ain't got long. He come down here having, he really hot with the fact he going to hell. He's a nigga. And a nigga ain't finna go down by himself. Do that make sense to y'all? So what did God do? Since I love y'all, I gave you my only begotten son. As a matter of fact, whosoever believeth on him should not perish, but have everlasting life. So when he came down and he started talking to the woman, he asked her about it. She said what? What did she say? Who did she say? Uh -huh. She said God said. God said so believing on the son, put, her, put that in a state, God said it. Mm -hmm. How we know this? At the 12th chapter right quick of the book of St. John. We'll come back to this um, third chapter. Y'all want me to let y'all go? Because we just talking. Ain't nobody preaching tonight. We can be done. That's how we're doing a little conversation. We got preachers already on duty. He said, like the kid, there's some more. There's some more in the kid. This is the twelfth chapter of the book of uh, the twelfth chapter of the book of uh, Saint John, verse forty-four should be fine. Listen to the book. Jesus cried and said. Jesus did what? Cried and said. When he cried, we wouldn't take it. He had tears rolling down his face. It was loud. Listen to what Jesus said. He that believeth on me. He that doth what? Believeth on me. Believeth on who? Not. Hold on. That believeth on who? On me. Believeth what? Not on me. They, so whoever believe on Jesus don't believe on Jesus. Who they believe in? But on him that sent me. So God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Jesus just told you he that believeth on me. It's really not me you believe on. You believe on him that sent me. So when God made Adam, God said, let him. Let him. God told him what to do. So when Eve declared it, Eve said, God said it. So God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That whosoever believed on him shouldn't perish. Because if you believe on him, you believe me. Hmm? Amen. That makes sense. If you believe on me, you believe on God. How do you pull God? Who, I'm confused with y'all. Because y'all have the way of y'all, synagogue of Yeshua. Do y'all believe in God or Jesus? We still trying to figure it out now. Because I mean, God is all. Jesus is his son. Which one y'all believe on? <laughs> it's so dumb. Jesus came on, he cried this out. He that believeth on me. Believe if not on me. But on who? Him that sent me. What happened, son? And he that seeth me. The what? Seeth him that sent me. That which was from the beginning, which we've heard, which we've seen, which our hands have handled. That's what we declare to you. You got to believe it. Listen, you got to believe that Adam was God. You're not going to be saved. Because his seed is in itself. You've got to believe in Jesus God. It wouldn't make sense not to. His seed is in itself. Hmm? This is what you do. Hypothetically, if I had an apple tree here, I take the fruit, open the fruit, take the seed, take the seed. This tree is here, the apple tree. I put 
that seed in the ground, this seed grow and produce an apple tree. You got to believe that this apple tree is that apple tree. Although it's two of them, it came out from that tree. You got to believe it. You got to believe it. Where did that tree come from? It came from that tree. You got to believe it. You got to believe that he God. Because you know why? He came out from God. He can't be nothing but a God. They even understood it from his speech. Here are the two. And I do what? What did they say he did at that time? They let that man know it was not just because of no Sabbath day. It was because you being a man just said that God was your father, which made him equal. They didn't even say that just no son of God. They said if what you said is true because you said your father, then you just said you was equivalent to God. They say equal to 517. Man, I, folk don't, St. John 3, 13, 16, boy, they folk don't know what they're doing. Shut your, they close your Bible. You sit somebody on the street, quote St. John, tell them something. I'm about, like that sister said on that video, I'm going to quote my hand upside your head. Now the sister got to the hospital, had a bracelet. I seen them, John had made a video about me. I, you don't watch stuff like that. I want to look one time, they did, they walk in the door, they did, had their little name. They was, I saw them looking at these folks trying to figure out. What are these people make this video about me? They said I one had on a hospital, gurney junk hat on, he laying up, sitting up, looking down, had it bad. He told me, they about women preach about I know one of them. My woman's preacher is a nut. All she do is touch the mic and immediately, amen. I, I feel the <laughs> spirit releasing. I said, but they talk, I'm saying, what in the world? What I'm talking about? If he talk about my woman, I'm not going to quote, I'm going to quote my hand upside his face. <laughs> right. <laughs> A sister threatening to hit me? <laughs> they called, they said they were the fruit inspectors. They went and make video. They, 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 and they sit down and they discuss if you got the fruit. And Carrie done messed it up. <laughs> Lord, why they let Carrie got it? <laughs> Carrie got that thing and put the fruity inspectors. Infection. And when Carrie Infection. got through with them fella, every video they had about Toast Mill, it was snatched down, yes. ran off, and gone. I just exposed them. <laughs> Listen to the book. St. John 5 and 17. Listen. But Jesus answered them, my father worketh hitherto. And Jesus I said that I'm God? What my, did Jesus say? My father worketh hitherto. So Jesus said that I am God. My father worketh hitherto. Uh-huh. And I work. And I work. Come on. Therefore the Jews sought the more to kill him. Because, listen. because he not only had broken the Sabbath. He not, not just because he broken the Sabbath, but listen what he did. But said also that God was his father. Listen what he said. He said that God was his father. Making himself equal with God. So if he said God was his father, that was the same to them saying that you were God. You just said you was a God. You know, it's amazing, though, how stuff works in society. I can go along and I can tell somebody who my dad is. My dad's name was Henry. And they'll say, hey, look, Henry. Ain't that right? Okay, even your name don't be name. Now, there's, there's a man that'll call you right out there. So I tell about your resemblance to him. Look just like him. Don't be je- you just like him. They just say you equal to him. These folks shoot their foot. They don't even know they be shooting themselves in the foot. But Jesus is not God. Y'all need to find out. Y'all need to, you know what we need to do? Y'all, y'all, need, to, y'all need to pray and ask God for understanding. Whenever I don't know something, I get my Bible and I just pray and ask God for understanding. And God just get it to me. Because y'all confused. But yet, these people had enough sin. All he said was God was his father. He didn't say he was equal to nobody, did he? They had enough sin to say, they, they dropped the Sabbath day stuff. You just said that God was your father. And you a man. You just made yourself equal with God. That's what Adam did. He said, let us make man in our own, and in our what? And let them have? Over the what? And what else? And over every what? That creepy well. Ain't nobody can have that but God. Who else can have that authority? Who else can have that authority but God? That meant Adam was God. Adam came out from God. He said, when we do his genealogy, for whatever reason, Doc, when he starts going through your sure genealogy, you'll find a different genealogy when you go from Matthew and you go over to Luke. One of the breakdowns you're going to get that you're going to miss over in the book 
of um, over in the book, uh, the, 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 the book of Matthew, when you start going out here, genealogy in the first chapter down from the first verse down about the 17th verse, you're going to catch one from Solomon. Solomon down, you'll hit David. When you come over from Luke and you start going out, you're going to catch David. What name you going to catch, brother? Nathan, another son of David. And you know why it's going to be important you don't need to catch David? Catch Nathan. Because prophets start talking. The prophet Zechariah told us something. Let's see what he told us at the 12th chapter. These folks don't realize this don't be important to them. That's why you need a teacher. This is why you're going to need a teacher. At the 12th chapter. At the 12th chapter of the book of Zechariah. Pick me up about verse 5. It's all the same word. Listen to the book. And the governors of Judah shall say in their heart, the inhabitants of Jerusalem shall be my strength in the Lord of hosts, their God. Listen. In that day will I make the governors of Judah like an hearth of fire among the wood and like a torch of fire in a sheaf. Y'all hear that? Y'all, but that tight right now. In, in that day, what are you going to do now to the what? In that day will I make the governors of Judah like an hearth of fire among the wood and like a torch of fire in a sheath. And y'all already know that make a comeback to what we're going to quote from that brother. He ain't going to stop the smoking of no flags. Isn't that right? John already told her who it was. And, and you know what made so we missed when John told her that I indeed baptized you with water. What would that again he do? Unto what? Quite something you want to try to quote the thing right? Or you just want to just get right on to it? Yeah, exactly. I indeed baptized you, brethren. Unto what? Unto repentance. He that cometh after me is mightier than I. He that cometh after me baptized with fire. Jesse, with real confidence? Hold on. He that cometh after me is what? Is mightier he that than come. I. I'm just. Whew. I indeed baptize you with water under repentance. He that cometh after me, who's mightier than I, whose shoes I'm not worthy to what? The last. Why he quote that? Because of Abraham. Abraham was told when he came down to Sodom and Gomorrah when he went back down. Not to take nothing. He said, I will order to God not to take nothing from you. Not even one shoe latch it. He was a king. They were kings. He told them don't even take one shoe latch from him. He declared. People don't even realize where that come from. He declared it. Abraham told him. He wanted to pay him. He said, they were, they were kings. He said, I can't take as much as a shoe latch. Now John jumped on the shoe. John said, you know what he said? I can't even touch this man's shoe latch it. It tight. You got to just see. He was a king. They were the kings of those cities. These people miss this stuff. That's why they're saying, oh, that's why you got to know what you're doing. Why, John, come on, tell me about shoe latching. What that got to do with anything? Unless I know the law. Abraham was commanded not to take nothing from him. He said, much as a shoe latch from him. And John jumped on the scene and said, man, I ain't even worried to touch that man's shoelaces. Would be his sandal strap. You know, don't want that man. Did he wear a Nike because they were on the Greek route? I had to stop y'all. Y'all be some air well. He because they Greek. He had a swish, had that swish. Up. No, stop it. No, no, they had Adidas. But anyway, <laughs> no, that's all right. But the thing that we set back to consider is all of these saying from the Father came back into play, and we had to know these things. He said he shall baptize you, and with what? With fire. Y'all all right? Amen. Before that, John told you the sun was in his hand. His fan. His fan. His wintery fan. And what was he going to do? He going to thoroughly do what? With what? What? With fire? Is that what they said? What did he say? What kind of fire, brother? It had to be a death. You can put fire out. It was a reason why John told us he was going to do it. With, uh, see, this little stuff people miss, you need to know it. He said, well, unquenchable. Why John just didn't say fire? It said unquenchable because remember, he's not going to stop the smoking of flags. Once he gathered his wheat into his barn, he's going to burn the chaff. And the law already told us, I'm going to burn it with unquenchable fire. I'm not going to stop, which means you get in hell. They missed that. Everybody missed it. Why would he tell you about the smoke of the chaff? Because I'm going to separate the wheat from the chaff. I'm going to burn it. We're unquenchable. I'm not going to put it out. 
And he told him, say, I wish you were already burning. The boy like to play with matches. People need the man like to play with fire. You know, one time my dad had a thing like this, full of matches. You know I bumped and what my dad was asleep. I messed around and he was on that couch. I don't know what. I was a little nigga then. I picked that little thing up to get that lab book. That nigga slapped that thing. I droop. That nigga woke up. <laughs> I know it was over with. I had burned up every, it was by that, but I burned every book. Of, I didn't know I had some Jesus in me. I didn't even know back then. I just liked that fire. Then one time, I can't tell it all. Mother Smith, I'm your pastor. Am I your pastor, Mother Smith? Huh? You think I what? One time I was. You love me, mommy? I love you, mommy, dearest. (laughs) I was under my bed. And. Stranger thing happened. I was looking for something. And I was just under my bed. I was, it was very interesting under my bed. I was laying there and well, it was just very interesting. And I just needed some more light. <laughs> so I got the matches and struck so I could look. Anybody know up on their bed, they got this little stuff like cotton, this little thin look. Well, mine used to have it back then. When that thing hit, that thing said, I was was on that bed fighting, trying to put it out. Man, that was a hard time. And when we moved, oh, 2056, Winter Avenue, you remember that in Atlanta, Georgia? 30033, I think the zip code. And we were moving to the cater, I said, I hope we don't get that house. I said, I hope we don't get it. We don't need that house. Because that means we had to move this furniture. And they're going to have to flip this thing over. And they're going to see how to set this thing on fire on them. Woo, boy, I've been some rough time. Anyway, back to our story, though. I love you, mommy. Uh, but I just, just looking at it. How many of y'all had a little Jesus singing? So I hope your mama whoop you. If I get a whoop, I hope your mama whoop you, too. But just considering... It's important we have to know all these different things because it gives us a better understanding. People wonder when you go to here if it's going to stop. To make sure he validated himself, he gave us the prophet to let us know about how this man won't stop the smoking the flag. This man, whole time we're thinking out why. He let us know when you go into hell. He told you if you uh, right hand offend you, he told you to do what with it? He says better to what? If your right hand offend you, cut it off because it's better to end in the light. My right hand gone, how I'm going to walk? Hope. <laughs> it's better than going to hell having one hand. He ain't joking talking about hope. <laughs> Your arm been cut off. What is wrong with you? He's my lame. <laughs> he ain't about to tell no dry joke. <laughs> Thank you, Dwayne. Then to go to hell having both hands where the worms don't what? And the fire, he won't start the smoke in the flag. Make sense now? Needless did those people know it was a mystery. They look around like, I don't get it. He's not going to start the smoke in the flags. I don't get it. It makes sense. He was talking about going to life. Because you go to hell, he, the fire not going to be quenched. Because he's not going to start the smoke in the flag. He has no problem with burning chaff because it's not weak. He have a problem burning something that's a value. He look at weak being no value. That's why you burn it up. Make sense? Okay. Come on back to what I got you in Zechariah, the 12th chapter. Zechariah chapter 12. We're going to have a verse 7, verse 8. Verse 6. Verse 6. Listen. And they shall devour all the people round about on the right hand and on the left, and Jerusalem shall be inhabited again in her own place, even in Jerusalem. Listen. The Lord also shall save the tents of Judah first, that the glory of the y'all, house man, of Man, y'all better pay attention there, man. Where are you going to be at? The Lord is going to say the tents of Judah first. You know what else a tent going to be? A tent of be? Boo. 
You don't live in no tent. You know, that's something temporary. You just put up. God going to say the booth of, of Judah first. Listen. That the glory of the house of David and the glory of the inhabitants of Jerusalem do not magnify themselves against Judah. Y'all hear this? Come on. In that day shall the Lord defend the inhabitants of Jerusalem, and he that is feeble among them at that day shall be as David. Come on. And the house of David shall be as God, as the angel of That's the gonna Lord. That's going to go right back to him. Say the house of David is going to be as God. And they kept wanting to know something too. Y'all remember what they want to know about? Huh? We get Israel the kingdom again. What do they want to know, Beasley? That's right. He want to know about that. He want to know about the Mashiach. Whose son was it? And they told him he was who? They say he was David's son. But we didn't understand why they made them statements. Concerning him being the son of David. Because the book lets you know that David is going to be his God. So that man coming on out of the house of David, it was referring. We should have been looking. When Isaiah told us, under us, under us, and the, we just read about the government. Going to be upon, his name should be called. Mighty, everlasting, prince of what? Upon increase. There should be, whereabouts. Because David's going to be his God. See, only way to say David's going to be like God, he's going to have to live forever. The book just told y'all David's going to be his God. He came out of the house of David. He was declaring it. Anybody that was looking for the literal David, you just didn't know. See, we got to, otherwise like the book lying. That's why he come and want to know about David. How was David his son? He said, if David said in the spirit, I heard the Lord said to my Lord, sit down here in my right hand until I make thy enemy the footstool. How is he his son? Because he was born of David according to what? How is he declared to be the son of God? With power, which we know which would be the what? The spirit. He told them to tarry into the, you shall receive, what was it again? Power. We'll look at authority of the spirit after After that, the rule of hard conditions come upon you. Then you should be witnesses of me. Y'all all right? Come on, finish this up. As the angel of the Lord before them. Come on. And it shall come to pass in that day that I will seek to destroy all the nations that come against Jerusalem. Listen. And I will pour upon the house of David and upon the inhabitants of Jerusalem the spirit of grace and of supplications and they shall look upon It got me. to come on Judah first. It got to fall on the, on the day of Pentecost when it was fully calm. Y'all know where they was at. They were all with, what was that again? All with one accord. Where at? Suddenly, as of a Russian, where did it feel? Where they were doing what? Standing? And they appeared on them what? Like as a what? It's got to be hot. David, didn't John tell you he's going to baptize you with fire? It's going to be hot. He just told you when you just read. He said he's going to pour fire down. It's on the left hand and the right hand. They're going to burn each other. We're going to burn with the spirit. All right. Anyway, I guess how it would work. At the end of the day, folks, we had to sit down here and look at this thing. Make sure you get close consideration. Look at why you're here. What you got to know. There's a lot of information in this book. All we've been talking about is St. John 3.16. Listen. And they shall look upon me whom they have pierced. Lord have mercy. David gonna be like God. Which means we're gonna look on him. He want who did we when did we look on David? He said, and they shall look on me whom they have pierced. Listen. And they shall mourn for him as one mourneth for his only son. Listen. And shall be in bitterness for him as one that is in bitterness. For his firstborn. Listen. In that day shall there be a great morning in Jerusalem. Listen. As the morning of Hadad Ramon in the valley of Megiddo, and the land shall mourn every family apart. Listen. Every family what? Apart. Listen. The family of the house of David apart. The family of the house of who? David. He said the house of David was going to be separated. Talk to me, son. And their wives apart. And their wives apart. Listen. The family of the house of Nathan apart. 
The reason why you find a two genealogy, you're going to find Mary genealogy and you're going to find Joseph genealogy. Joseph is going to tie you. When you find Joseph, his father, he's going to tie you into Solomon. When you find Mary, she's going to tie you into Nathan. You're going to find when he was up on the cross, when he looked down, he told the woman, behold, what was that again? He said, one going to mourn for their only son. As the firstborn. Guess what? The only way that was going to work, Mary, Jesus, could not have been her third or second son. She was the first one that he had, that she had. These, these folks don't know what they're doing. Their book. Man, burn your books. They don't know what they're doing. They have no idea why she was there. He told the woman, woman, behold your son. Son, behold your mother. And from that hour, John took her to his house. When you read, you'll find Mary, the mother of Jesus, Susanna, and the other Mary, all of them, they were there at the cross. You won't even read when his daddy was there. You know why? Because the scripture already said they were going to mourn apart. Which wouldn't make sense if she would have came from Solomon either because you can't marry your nearest of kin. Oh, that's why I get paid. Give me money. Give me money. That's your law. Why would both of them come out from Solomon and mess around and be too near kin? That's why I love the man. It makes sense. It makes sense. Because then they're going to tie him over incest. We still got a problem with the other folk. Anybody with, with Abraham married Sarah. But I don't know how, because the book told you in the fourth chapter of the book of Romans, where there, what was it again? No, what was There's no what? I don't know how you're going to charge him with no incest. It wasn't no law. So how was there a transgression? But afterward, there became a law, which means Mary and Joseph, there had to be a split. Because both of them come from Solomon, they keep rolling, they mess around and stay too close together, and you're going to mess around, somebody's going to marry their sister. Or somebody's going to wind up marrying their aunt, or their uncle, and our law taught against that in about the 18th chapter of the book of Leviticus. The man covered and said, that's why I work for the man. With benefits. They don't, they're trying to read talking about the Bible wrong. First they give you a genealogy, then they give you a different genealogy. You're a nigga. It's got to do that. You can't line both of them for no Solomon keep going. You're going to mess around and sister and brother going to marry. They're going to mess around. They're going to be from Alabama. No, no offense. I ain't mean to hit nobody. I had a friend one time. He was from Alabama. He used to go to the family reunion. I asked him why. To see your car. He used to know to pick up chicks. <laughs> give me some. I mean, no offense to the other. <laughs> but you see why it makes sense when you read. Now, these other people that are going to hell, you know, they, when they read it, they gonna, that's why you don't believe the Bible. Because if you read Matthew, genealogy, then you read Luke's, the book wrong. They ain't looking at it. Both of them came from Judah. There had to be a separation. You can't have nearest to kin marrying. Don't it make sense when you got a teacher? Come on back to St. John, right? I mean, come on back over to Genesis right quick. Genesis chapter 3. Wonderful Savior. Amen. Amen. Listen to the book. In verse 5. Listen. For God doth know that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened. Listen. And ye shall be as gods. Knowing good and evil. Listen. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food. And what else, son? And that it was pleasant to the eyes. And wonder what? And the tree to be, de- to be desired to make one wise. Yeah. She took of the fruit thereof and did eat. And gave also unto, unto her husband. See that the woman saw that. That the tree was good for food. One to be desired and one to make one wise. What did we find out to make one wise? Tell me how it worked. What was it? Be it? And that from a child. And that from a child. Thou hast known the code of scripture. Which is what? Able to make thee wise. Now how did the woman get off and she started looking at the tree and she said it was one, one to be desired, pleasant to the eye, one to make thee wise. Paul told Timothy that and from a child. Thou hast known the code of scriptures. Which is able to make thee wise. Unto salvation through what? James told us something. What was it? Faith without works is dead. He did declare that. What did he tell us, son? What happened? The re- be ye 
Be therefore not a hearer but a doer. What about how let no man say when he is tempted, I'm tempted of God. Because God can't tempt man with sin, neither is he tempted, neither does he tempt any man with sin. But every man is tempted when he's led away of his own, what was it? And when lust conceived and sin, when it's finished. That's why he told him not to eat of the tree. The day you eat of it, you're going to surely die. So God sent forth his son into the world. To do what? He sent forth his son into the world not to do what? To Condemn the world. the world. But that the world through, through who? Him through saved. him might be saved. So God sent Adam. Since he gave Adam the rule, Adam was sent in his image. If you want to be saved, you're going to have to hear Adam. That makes sense. If you were going to be saved, you're going to have to hear what Adam said. You want to believe what Adam said. Because Adam told her. She said, God said it. So when she believed on Adam, she was not believing on Adam. She believed on him that sent Adam. And she had to believe that Adam didn't do nothing of himself. But you know what wound up happening? Lust came on the play. Mm -hmm. And when that lust came on the play and she got tempted when she saw it, she said, now the woman saw that the tree, it was pleasant to the eye. Then she started lusting. She said it was one to be desired. She started to cover the behavior because if I, my lust, through what I was told, has created a lust in me. On top of that, I have a covetousness because the day that I do it, I will become as God. She coveted. Our law teaches us against coveting. Our book teaches us against lusting. That you guys don't think is really that serious. It's not a big deal. But if you don't think it's a big deal, that's why you're sitting here and you're dying. Because lust is going to put you in some other area. You're going to start coveting. And the law teach you, thou should not covet. Nothing that is thy neighbor's. Thy neighbor's. Thy neighbor's ass. Thy neighbor ox. Thy neighbor's wife. Thy neighbor. Because you know what? You don't wind up killing a person for it. You start hating a person. See, the law, if people take the law, like Paul told you, and I quote, the law good if a man use it lawfully. Yep. The law good if a person use it lawfully. Now, what she wound up doing was the mere fact that she didn't believe on it. So you know what happened at that point? According to St. John 3, 16, 17, what happened to her? She was condemned. Thank you, Zach. Thank you, Zachariah. She was condemned. He that believed it not on him is condemned already. She was condemned already. Let's see what happened. Wait, wait, three and five? Three six. and six? Listen. It was pleasant to the eyes and a tree to be desired to make one wise. Listen. She took up the fruit thereof and did eat. Lean not to your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge who? And he will do what? Correct your path. I wonder where that came from. Mm. She didn't say no scripture told her to do it. It wasn't, the word of God was not talking. This was her mess. When y'all get in your mess, just tell the truth, that's your mess. And you did it because you didn't want to take what God told you. Which means at that point you condemn already because you've been told. Why you think we as Jews, we suffer so bad? Because we've been told. So you condemned already. Listen. And gave also unto her husband with her. Come on. And he did eat. Be not deceived. Evil communication does what? Corrupt good man. Awake to what? Right. And sin what? Not. For some, because if she had it, would she try to give it to him too? Nope. Listen. And the eyes of them both were open. The eyes of them both were open. Actually, for us, literally, we'll look at they fell asleep. They were blind. Listen. And they knew that they were naked. And they knew that they were naked. Listen. And they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves, ap themselves aprons. And they heard the voice of the Lord God. Man, you know what I thought that fella said? They made fig leaves and they ate them. I'm like, they ate fig leaves? What translation is this? And made, made themselves aprons. 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 Come on. And they heard the voice of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. Listen what happened. And Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God amongst the trees of the garden. Listen. And the Lord God called unto Adam and said unto him, 
Where art thou? And what happened? And he said, I heard thy voice in the garden. I heard thy what? Voice in the garden. I heard what? Thy voice in the garden. And what did Adam, what could Adam have possibly done? And I was afraid. And what did you do, Adam? Because I was naked. And did what? And I hid myself. St. John chapter 3. At verse 16. Listen. For God so loved the world. That he did what? Gave his only begotten son. So you said it make a little more sense now we look at Adam. He had to put a man here because the world was going to be in trouble without a man. Because the devil already come down. He had great wrath. Because he ain't nobody had but a little time. So God had to put a man here. That man he put here, he had to make sure that man had something from him. That man had to declare what God said. You know why he had to declare what God said? When God speak. Hold your guy. Amos chapter 2. Chapter 3. You remember about verse 7. Y'all know how the prophets all went out and said, Thus saith the Lord. Amos chapter 3 and about verse 7. Listen to the book. Surely the Lord God will do nothing. Surely what? The Lord God will do nothing. Except what? But he revealeth his secret unto his servants, the prophets. Listen what happened. The lion has roared. And what happened? Who will not fear. Y'all hear that? What you going to do you right here in the lion roar? What you going to do? What's natural you going to do? Me and brother, Andrew, just how we were talking the other day with some of the brother. He said he was at the zoo and a gorilla was sitting there and the gorilla wasn't doing that. People hitting on the glass. They don't hit on the glass. And the gorilla didn't do that. He walked off up to the tree. He said he didn't pay any attention. He said all of a sudden the gorilla shot from by them tree wide open. He said I stood and I just froze. He said I couldn't even move. It was like, he said I almost messed on myself. I was just trapped right there. That was a natural instinct. What else was you going to do? Somebody, somebody tell me, it ain't bother me at all. Your natural instinct kick in. If a lion roar, he said, who ain't going to be afraid? Listen, what else happened, though? The Lord God had spoken. The Lord God did what? Had spoken. The Lord God had done what? Spoken. Tell me what's got to happen, son. Who can but prophesy? I can't do nothing but tell it. He said, just like it if you heard a lion roar, you're not scared you'll get. God speak. Who can't help but to tell it? Hmm? Wonderful Savior. Amen. Adam couldn't do nothing but tell it. When he told Adam what the Lord said, what, what was Moses going to come down and say different? God said, what are he going to walk down and say, me, what did God say? God had spoke. Couldn't help but to tell it. That's why he sent them prophets. You know what he would tell them to go do? Go and say, thus save the Lord. They know God talking. When the prophets started speaking, they said, God, why y'all think they went to inquire the prophets? Because they knew God had spoke. When God spoke, you can't help but to prophesy. Huh? What you going to do? Adam couldn't help but to tell it. So God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have ever. And we know that who, he that believeth on him don't believe on him, believe on who? Him that sent him. So now we know he's sinning. God sent him so you didn't die. And we came right along later. And we validated Adam. When did we validate Adam coming and talking to us? Leave it father and mother. When did we validate Adam talking to us? We'll hear you, Moses. Moses said, let the Lord, the God of spirit, all flesh, settle what was again? Man. Over the what? That the congregation of the Lord, that have no what? Shepherd can't make it by itself. We validated Adam being a man declaring it to us. Behold ye, what was it again? And what else will happen to you? And what else do you do? What You, you do what? And God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not. What was it again now? What was Adam? A, was he spirit? A man. A man. Does this make sense to us now? The whole purpose of the man coming and God spoke, the man obeyed God, he couldn't help but to tell it. And all that man will do to tell you what God said, you can eat that. If you eat that, when the day you eat it or touch it, you're going to surely die. So Adam went along, he had to declare that to you. This is life eternal. Don't touch that tree. Jesus declared it himself. And this is life eternal. That they, that they might know thee. The only what was it again? The only what? And who else? 
That's going to be in conjunction when you use and. Am I correct? Conjunction. The only true God and Jesus Christ, whom thou hast sent. Huh? John told us that this is the true God. He said, we know that who had come. He said, we know that Israel or Ish has come. And he had given us something. What was it again? Oh, understanding. And we know. What do we know? Him that is true. And we are what? In him that is true. Even in who? His son, Jesus Christ. This is the true God. God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son, and whosoever believe in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world. Adam didn't even come to condemn him. That's why he didn't run the woman down. He didn't, he didn't come to condemn him. You wonder why he wanted to slap. I'd have knocked the done teeth out, but that's why I wanted him. Ain't the Lord. I'd have killed him a done self, but that makes sense why he didn't. What you gonna do, your wife, or say and get you going here? What, what, what happened? You, something happened that thing. You're home, you're, and you're going to hell. What you going to say? I ain't going to put my hand. I'm going to hell. What I'm, I don't want to be a woman beater. I'm going to hell. I don't want to go. I, I still just can't see him the woman. But Adam didn't do it because Adam, he told you why he didn't do it. Because God didn't send him in the world to judge the world. But what reason did he send him to the world, son? But that the world through him might be saved. And you know what happened when he come along and tell the husband? He told me to do something. What was a husband? Love you what now? And do what? Hmm? Give yourself. Husband? Even as what? And tell me, what else did he do? And did what? Gave himself. And gave his life? And gave himself for it. For what reason? Let me pick it up right quick. 525 Ephesians right quick. The talk going a little long. I expect I didn't want to try to preach. I'm trying to sit down. Thank the Lord. Ephesians 525. Listen. Husbands, love your wives. Husbands, love your wives. And be what? Even as Christ also loved the congregation. Listen. And gave himself for it. That he might do what? Sanctify and do what? Cleanse it. Uh huh. With the washing of water by the word. Come on. That he might present it to himself a glorious body. Yeah. Not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing. Yeah. But that it should be Kadesh and without blemish. Listen. So ought men to love their wives as their own bodies. Yeah. He that loveth his wife loveth himself. Yeah. For no man ever yet hated his own flesh. Yeah. But nourisheth it. But nourisheth and cherisheth it, even as the Lord, the congregation. You know what? He teaches a man how to love your wife. Just like he got to learn how to love himself. The stuff you want to do to yourself, how you do that to your wife? I just been honest. People sit around. That's why he taught you to understand one body. It's hard to understand one. My wife is a separate individual. I am a separate individual. He said, love her just like you love yourself. He even tell me what my neighbor you want me doing to my neighbor? I want my neighbor doing to me. He said, I mean, it's the, it's the most simplistic way to figure it out. Love my neighbor. What did that, that involve, Lord? Let them borrow one or two eggs if they need it. Cup of sugar or a stick of butter. How do I love them? He said, well, love them like you love yourself. Let me see. If I needed some help and a man in my family had nothing to eat, would I want my neighbor to give me one egg or a dozen or some groceries? I'm, still, I'm trying to learn how to treat my wife. And is it like we can have me when you tell her how to treat our wife? Well, let me see. I don't want my teeth knocked out. I don't want to be called a stupid whore or a trick or a prostitute. I don't want to walk around with my head napping. I don't want to walk around with no busted drawers in Brazil. Well, I will want the same thing for my wife. I don't, you know, we need, we need a meeting on how to love your wife. Does that really make sense? Don't make none. He already cleared it up. He said, no, man, you don't hate your own self, do you? You're a nurse and take care of yourself, don't you? And you sick, you want to go get some medicine. Your wife says she'll be all right. My mama used to go, your mama did because your daddy was stupid. <laughs> Why you want your wife to do everything your mama did? You know your daddy was a retard. Thank you, Lord. 
Your daddy wore a diamond hat from the time he came from the house. All the other baby had skull caps. Your dad had a diamond hat on. And you're going to follow your dad on how to treat his wife. That's just being honest. You can't follow some of the old, the old standards, something we saw. That'd be honest. It was just bad. So now, when he, this, is, this is really simple. Love him. What would you want for yourself? Want the same thing for your wife. Watch how much better it work out for you. Sex get better. Everything get better. I did the same thing you want for you. Why you don't want it for your wife? Just be honest with you. You don't need no long class, no hours we spend trying to go over stuff. What you want for your same thing you want? How you want your husband to treat you? I want my husband to give me some time. I want my husband to do this. Well, so you plan on doing the same. What you want from him, give it to them. This ain't hard. Come on back to Sunday, Genesis. St. John. St. John be fine. St. John 3. Oh, we're at 17. 18. 18. Let them get it. St. John 3, 18. It's St. John 3, 16. It's really complicated, ain't it? It's a complicated little thing. We didn't even get far either, did we? Listen to the book. He that believeth on him is not condemned. Now, you know how she wound up declaring both of them wound up getting cast out and getting out? Because just be honest, she didn't believe. They didn't believe. He said, he that believeth on him is not condemned. He done told him, you don't believe. He that believeth on me don't believe on me. You believe on him that sent me. Same thing that people tell y'all. Y'all think the man, y'all make Smith for God. Y'all so. Paul said, now we, brother, or what was again? Who? Ambassadors for Christ. As though God did beseech you by, we ask you in, be reconciled to God. Be reconciled to God. That's why when Jesus came, he never would have picked women to go in and declare the message. It wouldn't make sense. He don't send men because it's going to be in reference to the son, just like he was. It would make no sense that God would send a woman to declare the message. He's going to give it to his son. He going to give it somebody can walk and see in the same image with the same authority. A woman can't have the same authority as a man. All right. Let's see. Come on. But he that believeth not is what? Condemned already. Already what condemned. Because that's why he told you he sent his son into the world. That the world through him might be saved. Now why would he send his son in the world to save you if it won you on already in a damnable state? Hmm? Would that make sense? They were already, she was already, they were already a damnable state. That was the reason of him putting the son in here. Listen. Because he have not believed in the name of the only begotten son of God. So the name that he gave him, Ish. Then he gave him authority. What's the word, brother? And his authority, he was supposed to be like God. Give me another part. Which means she was going to have to believe in the name of Ish, Ra, El. He Adam rule as God. You got to believe that. Man, who going to break that thing down like that? I can still tie Adam into 316. Ish is your word. Ra is the rule. El is God. And God said, let us make man our image. That's already God. Let him have the dominion. Get him the raw. Get him the raw over the heavens, over the earth, over the fire, over everything that run upon the earth. He's just like me. Matter of fact, call him Israel. He rule as God. Everybody got to take it. What we find another similar to the way a man give authority to do that to a man. Who? Come on, brother. Think, brother. Who? Peter. Give me a name. What we find at? Noah, Moses. Beasley, you use lonely Beasley. Give me some Puerto Rico. That's what I'm talking about. Joseph. Pharaoh gave you a Dominican. Joseph. Pharaoh gave him the authority. He gave Joseph the high seat in the land. Everything in the land of Egypt had to answer to Joseph. 
And he told him there was no seat higher than Joseph but him. That's what we found with Yeshua. Where do you think that came from? So it ain't hard to see what we see. If you want to go see Pharaoh, you had to see Joseph. Everything Joseph told you, that was just like you got it from Pharaoh. Because Joseph could interpret a dream for him. That's when Joseph was in prison. Just to give y'all a little, remem- a little remembrance. There was a chief butler and a chief baker. When he told him about the dream he had, he let the chief butler, chief baker know, you good as dead. The man going to chop your head off and kill you. Told the chief butler, said he going to restore you. Pharaoh had a dream. He kept seeing sheep and he seen stuff happen to him and come. And he came to talk to him about it. And he let him know about seven years he was going to have. That he was going to have good, that he was going to have a good crop. You know what's amazing about that? We used to have a seven year release. We used to have a jubilee. We have a solemn set out of seven years. In the seven years. Pharaoh going to get seven years to hit feet. They were going to be good. Then we're going to be a famine. When he realized that man could interpret the dream and get it, he said, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to put you over my whole house. There's going to be no seat, no authority in Egypt higher than you but me. And he put him over everything that he had. Everything he owned. That's the same thing that, that um, y'all did with Yeshua. Amen. Joseph was a prophet. He can interpret a dream. And the multitude said, this is who, brother? This is who? Of what? This is Jesus of who? Of Galilee? Of Nazareth. And the multitude said, Matthew 21 and 11. Hopefully we was on mute right then so people just can hear y'all now. The multitude said, it's Jesus, Galilee. Capernaum, Jesus. Never caught him in no Capernaum. This is Matthew 21 at verse 11. Listen to what the multitude said. And the multitude said. And the what? Multitude said. Listen. This is Jesus. This is who? Jesus. Listen. The prophet of Nazareth of Galilee. He had to be a prophet. That's what Joseph was. And Joseph would put over everything Pharaoh had. Pharaoh was king. Jesus had to be a prophet too. That's why he put him over everything he had. A prophet got to have foresight. A prophet got to be to hear from God. See, he said, when God speak, who can but prophesy? He had to be a prophet. If he wasn't a prophet, what was he going to do? The book told you that the prophet that had what it was again? Dream. What he supposed to do? Tell a dream. He said, but he that had, what was again? My word. What he supposed to do? Let him speak it How he supposed to speak it? Faith. You know what's amazing about that? Who do we tie that to? Moses. 12th chapter of the book of Numbers. You ought to go get it. And Miriam. And Aaron spake against Moses. For what reason? Because he had married an Ethiopian woman. And the Lord brought them out. He called all three out before the tabernacle. And he let them know that his servant Moses, who is what? Faithful in all his house. He said, if there be a prophet among you, I, the Lord, will make my soul to make myself know him. How, brethren? And I'll speak to him how. But my servant Moses, who is faithful with him, and not apparently in what? God never spake to Moses in no parable. He never said. And not only that, what else was Moses going to do, brother? And the similitude of the Lord shall he behold. Did he do it? If you think that when Moses sat up on the cliff and God hit him in the rock and passed over and moved his name, proclaimed the name, that was not the fulfillment of what he told him. He told him that Moses was going to see him. That's why you should let us know that he that has seen me. So Moses had to appear with Elijah in the ninth chapter of the book of Doc. The book told you they appeared to him. There were Moses and there were Elijah. And you know what happened to him? His countenance changed. It was light, like lightning. White as lightning. He had to behold the similitude of the Lord. Man, these people don't know what they're doing with this book. All these people, I shoot myself. Don't even make sense to tell it no more. 
Go tote water. They have no idea how important this book is to us. That's why he jumped on the scene. Moses told you the prophet of the Lord that God shall raise up like unto me of the who? Letting you know you shouldn't be looking for no priest. You shouldn't be looking for nobody from Levi. He said he's going to raise him up from the brother of me. You need to start scouting through the rest of the other folk. Let me look through the other limb. The Lord going to raise up a prophet and he's going to be like me. Huh? Amen. Y'all all right? They gonna be there. Whosoever don't hear him, guess what's gonna happen to him? What they gonna be? What they gonna be? Off of the what? What are we gonna tie that to? Think, brother. How many of my sisters know? Who? Who? Smitten on the face of the earth. Gone. Who? Hmm? Come on, Justin. We just read it, Adam and Eve. What happened to them when they didn't obey? They were smitten. They were gone. They couldn't come back there. You're gone. He said, you're going to be like me. Moses came along and told you in the seventh chapter. He told you, he told that the Lord spoke to him and told that fellow, I made you. What was that again? He made him. He said, I made you a God. He said, Aaron, your brother is your prophet. Now you go tell Pharaoh. What you think why not happen to Pharaoh when he didn't hearken, he didn't listen? What happened to him? He had to die. He had to be wiped off. What you think? He gonna be like me. The man most second you should have been looking for, so he gonna be like me. That's why he came and told you. Don't y'all think that I'm gonna be the one to accuse you to the father. There's another one in whom you trust, Moses. Because had you believed Moses, Why? When you read Genesis 1, 26, when you read Genesis chapter 2 and verse 16, when you read Genesis 3 and 1, when you read on down, you should have known they were talking about me. You should have known they were talking about me. That's what Mo Moses is a credit for the first five books. He didn't tell you Moses spoke. He said he wrote of me. We will count our Pentateuch, our Torah. That's our books. Our first five books of the Bible, that belonged to Moses. The man didn't say he spoke. He said he wrote of me. With me, you didn't read it. Man, this thing here, right? I got to quit all that talking. I got to go. So, man, you got to preach this thing. I got to. I, I ain't part. Henceforth, let no man trouble me. Don't even trouble. This book is too deep. This sudden knowledge is too high for me. This man book so right. Man, who else? Who, got, who else got law so right? Huh? Who got God so nigh unto them? Who else got what we got? And we just picked this. It's in the book. That man I told you, Moses, faithful in all mine house. You should have picked it up. Told whoever got my words that speak it faithfully. That's why the son had to tell him. He told you the father gave me a commandment on what I should do what? He said on what I should say. Because I'm a prophet. When the Lord speak, who can't help but to tell him? He said, God gave me a command. That's why he kept saying, say, go and say, thus save the Lord, the Pharaoh. What you think Moses done? Moses had to do it. He was, that's why he said he faithful. That's why I got it. He was faithful. I, when, I went through the whole, when I went through the lineage of Levi, this man faithful in all his house. I made this man a God. When I picked that man up from Judah, this man faithful. His daddy told you about him. He started to go down and start to proclaim between their bars. He let you know what Judah, what Judah was. A lion's whip. He was a young one. You should have been looking for a young one. Huh? Pick me up, let me hear about Judah, son. Call 11. 49. Genesis 49. 49. Pick me up about 7. Pick me up at 5. There's some more boys I love to hear about, too. Call me around and hear something, boy. I'll cleave to somebody and I'll cut your throat. I had an Uncle Frank, he might have been from Simeon. He cut a guy one time and took him to the hospital. Don't <laughs> was crazy. Cut the fella up and then took him to the hospital. That's a nice fella, isn't that right? This is the 49th chapter of the book of uh, Genesis. I only want verse 5, but tell it to me anyhow. Listen, son. Listen to the book. Simeon and Levi. What about them, son? Are brethren. Y'all hear what he said, man? They brethren. Listen what happened. 
instruments of cruelty are in their habitation. What that mean in their habitation? Now you search down through these fellas here, boy, I kill you. He said, that's in their habitation. You mess around them boy that door. Them boys will hurt you now. Come on, talk to me about them. Oh, my soul. What he told us to do? Come not thou into their secret. They ain't stupid. You think they're going to tell you everything? He done told you that before. Jesus tried to tell you, my friend, you do what I command. Here's for I don't call. What with that again? Why? Because the Lord don't tell a servant everything he does. He said, you don't come in their secret. Them fellas not to keep their mouth closed now. I just be, you know what Simeon didn't say now when he was talking? The boy daddy came, shook him. Daddy came with that and told him, said, man, let me, I'm, let me go and get that little girl down there. Man, my boy, he madly in love with that girl. Man, he met around that man, that girl went out there, boy, and had sex and now he like him. He just listen. They keep on like he just sitting in the field. <laughs> you know, boy, I don't slept with our sister. A hook right up on where he at? Went right on down into the city. Just let him know. Said, well, where we from, how we do stuff. We a little different than everybody else. We can't even give our um, sisters and daughters, our women over to nobody and let them be circumcised. That's the only way you can do it. He told their daddy. said, look, daddy. They said, I can get them. If I be circumcised, they said, y'all go ahead and circumcise. Y'all can have our women. We'll take you up. And when they circumcised themselves, Simon and Levi came in. Tell me what happened to them, son. Unto their assembly. You don't want to come in the secret of their assembly. Tell me why. Mine honor. You know what Jacob said? Man, them boys embarrass me. That's why he said my honor. He said, man, you and these boys embarrass me. Tell me what these boys did embarrass them. Be not thou united. He said, don't need let them come together. Why? For in their anger. What they do, son? They slew a man. And what else happened to them? And in their self-will. You hear that? They all hear that they self-will. What did they do, son? They dig down a wall. But I can destroy a city. He told I don't think you're from Judah. I'm from Simeon. I think you're from Simeon. You better hope not. Cause I met around and hook up with Levi. Y'all in trouble. You don't want to come into our assembly. Isn't that right? Y'all all right, brother? Amen. I'm just keeping it real. Now, that just go with what the book said. The book, if you know it, you won't ever find what Simeon and Levi hooked up together. Now, after that, Jacob had, listen, God had to divide them. He said, man, these two fellas can't get together. One here and the other one to join. Whatever reason we're he'll just lock right up with him. He'll get right along with that fella, and next thing you know, both of them will kill you. Now, who did use him? Who wound up picking him up? You said Moses used him? I'm glad y'all are. I'm going to come out there because these wrong answers is really going to run me up the wall. Caleb went and got Caleb went and got Simeon. Pick me up at the book of Judges right quick. Judges 1 and 1. Can I, y'all give me a minute. Y'all getting some information tonight, though? Amen. Man, y- y'all, let me tell you something. Guess what? The information y'all get tonight. Y'all do know it's been in this book the whole time. When we were Baptists, when we were Presbyterian, Protestant, Jehovah Witness, non denomination, Seventh day Adventist, Apostolic, Peter in the Bush at Pentecostal, Paul, Dogfoot religion. This stuff been in the book. This, where, am I, where am I getting this stuff from, y'all? y'all hear me? How do these people been, how do, it, you know what I get so mad at these people for? How was it these people can see this? Same book we read and all this stuff. How many times I heard read the Old Testament long? Jesus died. Once Jesus died, we New Testament. Man, these folk messed me up for years. Listen. Just yeah. one and one. Amen. Today. Now, after the death of Joshua. After the what now? The death of Joshua. Tell me what happened, son. It came to pass that the children of Israel asked the Lord, saying, Who shall go up for us against the Canaanites first? Who should go up for us or get the Canaanite what? First. Talk to me, son. To fight against them. Mm-hmm. And the Lord said, Judah shall go up. Judah shall go up. Behold, I have delivered the land into his hand. Listen. And Judah said unto Simeon. What did he say? Judah bro- said unto what? Simeon, his brother. Judah said unto who? Simeon, his brother. What did he tell Simeon, his brother? Come up with me into my lot. And do what? That we may fight against the Canaanites. Yeah. And I likewise will go with thee into thy lot. I'll go with a big bad nigga too. I got you good with me. I know you tear them up. I'll go with you. I'm going to be sitting around watching. I already know you'll kill them. That's for Simeon. Who you Levi? Judah used Levi. 
So we just read the book of Judges, the first chapter, and Judah used Simeon. Somehow you just miraculously just heard that Judah used Levi. You looking at it, you can see that right now? You heard it in one of my sermons. Mm-hmm. Nobody used them? See about the 33rd chapter of the book of Exodus right quick. Let me see. Let me see what I want. 33 and about 11. Let me see what it's like. Listen. Exodus 33 and 11. Listen. And the Lord spake unto Moses face to face as a man speaketh unto his friend. Yeah. And he turned again into the camp. But his servant Joshua, the son of Nun, a young man, departed not out of the tabernacle. Uh huh. And Moses said unto the Lord, See, thou sayest unto me, Bring up this people, and thou hast not let me know whom thou wilt send with me. Mm hmm. Yet thou hast said. What verse I want? Chapter 13. No, not no 13. Well, I want 31. 13, 31, 32, 13, 26. Yeah, right. Make it 23. Y'all ain't gonna never beat me out. 32, 22. Because I'm thinking, I won't say 23. Yeah, make it 22 now. Come on. And Aaron said, Let not the anger of my Lord wax hot. Thou knowest the people that they are set on mischief. Listen. For they said unto me, Make us gods which shall go before us. For as for this Moses, the man that brought us up out of the land of Egypt, we wot not what is become of him. Mm-hmm. And I said unto them, Whosoever hath any gold, let them break it off. So they gave it me. Then I cast it into the fire, and there came out this calf. Come on. And when Moses saw that the people were naked, for Aaron... Had made them naked now, unto look, their shame. Who would that, that, that make him? God. So when Moses was saw that the people were naked, that made him Adam. No, he told him I made you a God. He could see the people were naked. When Moses came down, that's what the Lord did when he came through the when he came in the cool of the day. He could already see. He could see what happened with the people. Come on. Them naked unto their shame among well, their enemies. Well, you start right back at them naked. Go ahead. Then Moses stood in the gate of the camp. Then want to sit outside and naked tomorrow night. Won't he? Come on. And said, "Who is on the Lord's side? Let him come unto me." He, he does, who is on what? The Lord's side. Let him do what? Come unto me. And what happened? All the sons of Levi gathered themselves together unto him. Listen, what happened? And he said unto them. Thus says the Lord God of Israel. What he told him? Put every man his sword by his side. And do what? Go in and out from gate to gate throughout the camp and slay every man his brother. For what reason? And every man his companion. For what reason? And every man his neighbor. For what reason? And the children of Levi did according to the word of Moses. Listen. And there fell the people that day, about 3,000 men. Mm-hmm. For Moses had said, consecrate yourselves today to the Lord, even... Every man upon his son. Listen. And upon his brother, that he may bestow upon you a blessing this day. You want to do that? All he got to find out is God going to bless us. I'll cut your throat. He told him to consecrate that son. The Lord going to bestow a blessing upon you that day. That man took every man his sword. Told every man, slay every man his brother. You know what? That's amazing what you should when you pick him up. Because he told you to think that I did something. I didn't come to sin peace. What did he say he came to sin? I wonder where he got that from. Where y'all think he probably got that from? Because Moses wound up telling her that he was going to raise up a prophet just like him. So he came. Now he ain't going to tell him before he's going to bestow a blessing on him that day. And what do you think they think? Oh, here it come. Sha na 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 na. My God finna bless Take your sword and slay every man here, brother. He said, I didn't come to put sin peace. I came to send a sword. What you think happened when that man came down, when Moses came down from the mount? He was just like God. I could already see. You know what's amazing? That those people had on clothes and Moses could perceive they were naked. Because the book of Hebrew, kinfolk say, the word of God is quick. And what was it? Sharper than any what? Cut between? 
And there's a of the thought. And then what else? Intent of the heart. Neither is there any that is not naked. When Moses came down, those people had on clothes. You know that Moses could see they were naked. I wonder why he was able to do that. Y'all think maybe because he was a God. That's why I tell you, man, these folks don't know what they're doing in this book. There's too much information in this book. Such knowledge is just too high for me. I'm more brutish than any other man. Who else done gathered this stuff in the wind in the fist of his hand? Who done established and created this earth? What is his name? Y'all know what I'm going to ask you next, ain't it? What is his son's name? If you can just tell me. That's why I love him. The knowledge is just rich. rich, Just a rich knowledge. Isn't that right? Who else could come along and look down? The man come down from the mountain and look at the people and could see they were naked and they had on clothes. You know why he could do that? Because of the word. The word allowed him when he came down, he could see they were naked. Why you think Paul could come in and see the fall brother and carry in? What was that again now? Did they have a sign on, had a shirt talking about Paul's brother? We the FBs. Paul's brothers. The word let him see. Huh? Amen. When Nehemiah, when they came to try to talk to him and told him they wanted to meet him in the temple. They tried to tell him what was going to happen to him. They told him about coming to try to save his life. But what did he say he perceived? That God had not sent them. So they prophesied that thing in their own self. And he said, and such, and should such a man as I do what? To do what? Save his what? And what he said, what happened then? He said, I commit sin. That's what Nehemiah said. He said, if I try to save my life, he said, I commit sin. You know what's amazing about Yeshua? He said something about it. He that seek to do with that. What he said was going to happen. I wonder what that be sin. Where did Yeshua get that from? Because we new creatures. You can't use the Old Testament. It just looked like he just said something himself. Nehemiah stated it for him. Because they tried to get him to come off the wall. They had told him, it's some folk going to try to kill you if you stay up on that wall. He said, man, they prophesied this stuff for their own intent. He said, they're trying to make me come down and try to save my life. He said, man, I commit sin. Y'all all all right? Amen. That's why he had to do it. At the 12th chapter of the book of St. John, he even told him about it. He said, for this hour came out well. He said, and what should I say? Father, save me? He said, I can't do that. He said, I can't do nothing like that. He said, that's the reason why I can't. He told you to accept the corn of wheat. Do what was again? And do what? What'll happen? You know what? That man looked at it. It's God's harvest. What you gonna do? This is this is just how it works. If I start how God works, it's gonna be sin. I gotta do what the man told me. What happened with us? You gotta die. What we prepared to get ourselves for and what we're in here for, folks. Listen, the man manufactured us to do this. The Bible said we led you like sheep to the slaughter. It may have manufactured us to death, but it's going to give us life at the end. It's going to give us life at the end. You didn't even know when you came along without God's word, you were going to commit sin. You didn't know your whole life was in a shaman, you was in a man. You were made subject, and you weren't even willing to do it. It just happened. What else was you going to do? You were made for that, but at the same time, God done already established you to look for hope. That's why we're here. How many of y'all hoping God saved you? Guess what? The same God you hope to save you, he manufactured and set you up. You couldn't help but to commit sin. What was you going to do? God word talking and you were subject to the flesh. What was you going to do? You don't commit sin. You didn't even know God. What was you going to do? God word talking and you don't know God. What was you going to do? I got to commit sin. I was made subject. I ain't even, ain't even, I ain't even get the road. He ain't asked me, say, do you want to be a son and go to hell? I ain't, nobody even came and asked me nothing. Yeah, I learned from the book. I was made subject. It wasn't even willingly. I was made to commit sin. But the same God that set me up and knew what I was going to do already set me up. And also, I gave you hope. That's why I said hope make him not ashamed. That's why I called him. That's why I served. That's why I'm here. Same one subjected me and allowed me to do what I did. Set me up for hope. Set me up for a promise. That's why you're here. 
That's why you need to know all this information. It helps you to understand and digest your life a little better. Don't get yourself in such a panic and a roar to quit and stop and run. The same God already sat me up. Every time he let more situation, more problem, more things come, because God's just trying to break me down so he can use me. God's just trying to get me away from me. God's trying to get me away from tech. You know what God do? What does God do? God does something. What do he do? Have mercy. What does God do? One the prophet told her God do something. What did he do, Ryan? Huh? Make a way to escape. I put two fingers up. What? He close enough. Be the guy. God speaking once. Yay. But you know what man do? Let me tell you what's, what's significant about this. First man, Adam, was of the what? Second man. The first man, Adam, was of the earth, earthly. The second man was the Lord from heaven. So when Job tried to tell us something, God speaking, Adam, yay, that's going to be your sure. But man did what? How we know this? How do we know these two facts? God speaking one, you're right on the second part. On the first part, we know it because when Adam was in the garden, she didn't perceive it. God spake once, but, this, but man perceived it not, and he spake twice. He told us about Adam, didn't listen. God told us about Yeshua, didn't listen. And guess how he spoke? In a dream. That's going to put us looking for a prophet. When deep sleep does what? Deep sleep, we know it death. Upon slumbering upon the bed. Then he opened his ears and sealed his instruction. For what reason? That he might hide pride far from man. Pride keep a man from, from being where he need to be. Y'all didn't know Job was trying to tell y'all about Adam and you sure did you? That's why I get paid. Give me money! Why would Job tell you once and twice? Because you got two men. Huh? Y'all all right? Amen. And he's exactly right. He came into his own. His own received him not. That would have validated what Job told you. When he spake twice, you didn't even perceive it. Y'all know how many people don't even know who Adam is? Y'all know how many people don't know who Jesus is? Because Job told you they didn't know. Hmm? In 1 Corinthians chapter 2 and about verse 9, the book told you something. What did he tell you? I am not seen, neither ear heard, the thing, the things the Lord had prepared for them that loved him. You going to do that for real, Zach? You going to look at your Bible and look at him? You going to look at Job? That was 32.14. 33.14. For this end also was the gospel preached. First Corinthians right quick, chapter 2. Let me let y'all go. Let me do something right quick. I ain't seen brick hadn't hit you. You just cheated and hollered that? Isn't that right? This man I'm just read it five minutes later. I ain't seen. You hadn't seen yet. Hadn't you? First Corinthians chapter 2, give me verse 6. Let's see what he told us. Because Job said once, twice, man perceived it not in a dream, a deep speech fall upon men, upon some upon the bed. Then he opened their ears and sealed their instruction that he might withdraw man from his prop. He went trying to withdraw man from his purpose and hide pride far from man. Listen. How be First Corinthians chapter 2 and 6. How be it we speak wisdom well? Among them... That are perfect. Which would mean they're going to be what? Blameless. Mature. Listen. Yet not the wisdom of this world. Listen why? Nor of the princes of this world. They're going to be nor the rulers of their world. Which come to what? Not. Listen. But we speak the wisdom of God. Even in a what? In a mystery. What's going to be a mystery, brethren? Hidden truth. Listen what he told you. Even the hidden wisdom which God ordained before the world unto our glory. So God ordained that you would be blind. You didn't even know who Adam was. 
And really, that's your glory. Listen what he told them. Which none of the princes of this world knew. Not one of them. You think Pilate knew? You think Herod knew? You think the Pharisees and Sadducees knew? Not one of them knew. Listen why you know. For had they known it. If they had known it. They would not have crucified the Lord of glory. With Joel were right. God speaketh once. Adam was supposed to go. And whatever Adam said, that what God said. He said, God speaketh once. Yea, twice. Said, but man perceiveth it not. They missed it. In a dream. He would let you know the prophet spoke. The prophet spoke. And we missed it. <sighs> I got to cut this off. Because we can just keep going and going. But the word is right, though. At the end of the day, the word is right. I don't want to tell y'all long. I, I tell you, we can go on, but the time will fail me. But I thank the Lord. That's good, brother. That's good. That's good. Thank the Lord. That's good. That's good. Thank the Lord. That's good.